publication design, um, I'm going to talk about assignment two, which is our interior book design. Um, so here's the project sheet, and um, here's the process. We're breaking this process down of designing an interior of a book. Um, and it's not an entire book. It's like a, I would think of it as a chapter. Um, <clears throat> but we are going to be going through the entire design process. So first, research books and articles about designing books and, act, and look for actual interior of book layouts, either online or um, on some of the sites that I suggest, which is right here. Okay. Next, you'll decide on typeface for the book and submit samples. And you're going to submit these, um, uh, these images that you collect. You'll decide on a page size, create grids and thumbnail page spreads for your book. You'll decide on one of the grids you picked and begin the layout of your book. You'll submit to Portfolio. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah, to Portfolio, and then upload to a discussion for a class critique. And then you'll make changes and then submit it as your final design. Okay. So, um, okay. So, uh, first is the re the research process, and I'm I'm hoping and and assuming that no one's really designed books before, so this is a good time to start researching it. Um, so this is a really good article here that I would real highly recommend you reading first about um, designing the interior of books. Um, then um, I would like you to review and read all the support files that I give you, including the actual text of the book. I'm going to go to that now. And so this is what you'll get. Um, this is the assignment to book a multi, oh, sorry. Yeah, multi-page design book. So anyway, this is what you'll, this is the file you'll receive. It'll be in a zipped format like this with the word zip. And then you'll have to right click and choose um, open or with a Mac, you'll double click it. But here's the thing. So there's a bunch of pictures in here and a bunch of um, uh, okay, well, let me, I'm sorry, I'm functional. I'm just a little bit asleep. Um, so this is a panoramic sunrise that you can include. Um, this one is the text for the document, which you must include. Um, so yeah, this is, <clears throat> I've, we've already found that your trim size is an eight by 10. It's going to be printed in full color on 80 pound text matte coated white. And the binding is a perfect binding, which is basically a, um, a uh, paperback, but there are some really nice bindings um, for paperback, depending on paper and things like that. But yeah, the Met is going to be housing this, so that's the idea. Um, you need to include all of the images of figures one through five in your layout, but optional are the panorama images and masks. So read through this and kind of you need to figure out what typeface and you need to include captions as well. This is no note now notice this is one, two, three, four, five, and here's our figures one, two, three, four, five. So those are necessary. These are optional. These kind of lovely masks. They're large. Um, some of them are anyway. So um, you will need to do some Photoshop work on these. And why do I say that? Well, because here's a black and white, um, black and white color. Um, they're just all a little bit different and weird. They don't terribly go together. So I'm going to task you with the, um, with the directions of making these go together better. Okay. 
All right, now that we've read that and kind of looked over it, now you'll have to actually read it. Um, the next thing to do is to go and collect images. Like, I don't just want any images. Collect some award-winning interior book designs. Here are some sites where you can find those. And I'm going to go visit those right now and show you what I'm talking about. Um, so let's see. Oh, this was the really good article, Seven Book Layout Designs and Typesetting Tips on 99designs.com, which I referenced at the very beginning. Please read this first. It's really good. Then um, I'm going to go back to back page. We're going to go collect some images. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to, so this is one of the websites that I had listed and I'm just going to look through, kind of scroll down to see if I can see a good interior image. Yeah, this one doesn't have any. Look at this one to see if this has any. Hmm, that's all we get. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I was getting a lot more images. So sorry about that. It seems like this is kind of a, as if you read the document, it kind of goes with um, some kind of nature, natural history. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm sorry you're not seeing anything on the inside here in my examples. Um, what I did find was this is an interior. So I went and grabbed that. I think they had... Yeah, so I grabbed this, and so to get it, I'm going to right-click and choose Copy Image, and then I'm going to go to InDesign, and here's my, my page, and I'm going to paste it in. You'll notice I've already done this one, but if they come in big, you can grab a corner and hold down Command and Shift and move that to the size that you're after. And so you're collecting these images and putting them in here as just kind of a reference. You're like, what do I like about that? Why is this working? Well, for me, I like the layout. I like how this line goes across the picture and then across here, the top of the text. I like that there's different... Um, little things to look at, but this doesn't seem overwhelming and I can like dig into that and read it and be okay with it. Um, I like this one because um, I like how it plays with the type a little bit, which may not work with our book, but it may. So you're collecting 10 of these images and sending this in. When do you do it by? Let's look down here. This is um, the research process due on the 15th. And this is where you'll collect and submit 10 images of award-winning interior designs to assignment 2A, example images. And down at the bottom here, I have a schedule. So February, you're getting it on the 9th, February 15th, 2A. So, and then 2B, 2C, and 2D. Well, so it'll take about a month to do. Okay, so the next bit we're going to be working on is typeface exploration. So we're going to start looking at typefaces that might fit the, vo the kind of the tone or the voice of this book. Um, and you're going to create five examples of one column of type, about um, two and a half by six inches, showing what the point size of the letting and what the spacing is and, and what the typeface is and submit them. So I've done that here for an example. So this particular column shows Garman Premier Pro Regular, 11 points with 13 letting. So you may not know what that is, and I should probably explain it. Um, type is measured in point size. So if I highlight this type, 
you can see the size is 11 point and I can move let me select the whole thing I can move this up or move it down and this over here is called letting it's the space between type and I can move this up or down I've chosen 11 over 13 oops 11 over 13 did I no oh, now it's 10 11 okay good and um, this one is Garman Premier Pro. This one's Gaudi. This is Baskerville. This is Adobe Caslon. And I need to fill this one with something. It's, it's Baskerville again. But as I look close at this, um, what, what I really want to do is kind of understand what the feel of this type is. I'm going to hide these frame edges right there. Okay, so now I can just really focus on the type. Um, so to me this seems a little more um, Um, I'm sorry, I was distracted on something on my computer. A little more uh, um, fancy, this one. And why do I say that? Well, um, just looking at my A senders and my D senders. So if I look at my Ds and Ls, this is a pretty long A sender. Okay. And, and to me, that reeks of fanciness where if I go over to this one it's it's a little bit longer but I don't think as long as these this is feels a little more a little bit thinner a little more refined this one is a little bit um, slightly more utilitarian um, also I wanted to point out a particular letter and you can look around for specific letters that may have that may have some meaning for me I looked at this letter M and this one I go well you know what? it looks pretty legit it looks like it has some authority behind it um, as I move over to this other M Um, now, this one seems a lot more uh, full of itself, <laughs> to, to put it. Um, it seems like there's a little, a little more fanciness to it. I'm gonna, and look at these eyes, little diamond tips on the eyes. And so we really have to get down super careful in here and look at this a it's not just rounded it has a round with a small bend to it feels a little bit fancier than oh now this one now this is so it's also important to look at the history of these things this one's very calligraphic meaning it was done by hand um, originally and we're seeing a lot of those references here I feel um, this, if you've drawn with a calligraphy pen, you're holding a pen at a, I don't know, 22 and a half, 30 degree angle, and you're pulling up, over, down, and up. This has a really humanistic quality to it. Um, it feels like maybe a little more personal. Um, maybe this is a little... Um, a little fancy however and thin right however look how um, compared look how open these letters are compared to this it's a little bit tighter in here you can see if you squint it's a little darker over here these are a little bit larger letters so it makes the readability a little bit nicer and then we can go through all of these and just go okay how, how does everything sit how does it feel um, and you may have to zoom in quite a bit and you might have to do some research to see which ones look at this T um, very thin here's a rounded A what is this 
This is Baskerville. Okay. So we might want to go, okay, um, history of Baskerville typeface. Um, Baskerville designed in 1750. That's a long time ago. Um, so it has definitely has some classic nature's nature to it, right? Um, it was a transitional typeface. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means um, <clears throat> it actually means it's it's a transition between two different typefaces. So um, it's not an old style, and it's not this more contemporary. It's a transition between the two. Um, Baskerville is the name of a guy, uh, John Baskerville, type designer, way back, way back when. Um, and he was the, one of the first type designers in England. So um, Baskerville also has traditionally really pointed <coughs> serifs that um, a lot of people didn't like. It seemed pretty radical to them. Um, compared to Garman, Garman was another uh, type designer. And I think earlier. So um, look around and pick a typeface that would work well with what what we're talking about um, for this particular article. African ivories. Um, okay, so now that we have that, and so no, notice what I've done on this. I've um, let me just do it again. Um, I'm using my text tool, type tool. And um, I'm going to click and drag, and you can see I have this little display popping up. And I want to go two and a half wide, 2.5, and then six deep. There it is. And I'm going to release it. And then to fill this with text, I'm going to go to type. Um, Fill with placeholder text. You can't see it, but that's it. Fill with placeholder text. So it drops it in. Um, I'm going to use this um, the character palette, which you can access through window type character. It has a little checkbox that says I have it open. And I'm going to pick some a, a typeface that would make sense. And since this is going in the Met and terribly traditional. <clears throat> One of these classic typefaces does make a lot of sense. Um, and maybe this one, I change it up just a bit, maybe going a little more of a modern twist on, um, you know, this is called the serif typeface. So maybe a little more modern twist on the serif, um, like Minion perhaps, or um, hmm. Maybe Palatino. Palatino is really readable. Oh, I didn't like that. Maybe I'll try this Palatino. I didn't like that either. Huh. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you'll have to find ones that fit for you and in your view of what this text is getting across pt serif i don't know i mean you're gonna have to you'll have to look around and see um pt serif might be something but if we look close at it i know it's going to be quite different yeah look how dark and it's kind of an ugly really an ugly typeface compared to this wow this really really is lovely. What is this one again? Adobe Caslon. Um, another English typeface designer, by the way. Um, yeah, this one's really rough. So anyway, look around. Um, that's how I designed that, uh, or how I created that. Next, we're going to go, and you're going to submit those five samples. Next, we're going to go to grid and composition exploration. 
I'd like you to read this article on Canva about what is a, what is grid design. It's an excellent article. Um, we already have the page size given to us, so this one you don't need to do. And then what I want you to do is create five different grids for a spread. So now what does that mean? Um, uh, well, here, let me just demo this. If I'm going, I'm going to go to this one. And let me close it actually, and I'll make a new one. Don't save. So we're going to make a new um, document, and this is going to be um, measured in inches. And they've already given us that it's eight by ten. And so I'm going to click. Oh, I want facing pages, which will keep them in spreads. And we're going to do. I'm sure ten pages. So we'll choose create. Now, um, I am an in InDesign, so I'm going to go up to my pages and notice that I do have 10 pages in here. And uh, where I'm going to design this grid, which is the next thing that's asked of me, is up here on my master pages. So I'm going to double click on this. Now I'm on my master page A. Um, and the beauty about master pages is when you design something, like if you put grids in or change your margins in this master page, and you apply it to these pages, notice this is A master, and then all of these are A. So these all will follow what's going on on my master A up here. So if I change my margins or add um, guides, um, they will show up down here. You can see what I, I mean, I added those and it shows up down here. So, um, let me delete those. Okay. What I'd like you to do, since we have to do 10 grids, is to do, is to um, get this master, once master's highlighted, you'll click this plus five times, or four times. Okay. And then I want you to create your grid on the spread right here, these two, and then do your second grid on these two. So, um, um, I, I, although I appreciate half-inch margins, I think I want to make my book a little more unique than half-inch all the way around. This is an upper, outer, lower, and interior. So we're going to go to um, columns and guides. And I'm going to change my top to 625 and bottom to 625. On my outside, I might go to one inch. And notice what it's doing. It's changing that. And then inside, I might go to... Oh, you know what? Notice, it was only, if you didn't notice, it was only changing one side. And it's because both of these weren't highlighted. <clears throat> Pardon me. So if I highlight both of those, and um, the way I do that is holding down Shift or Command on a Mac, or Shift on a PC or Mac, or Command or Control on a Mac or PC. Then you can click that. And then if we go to Margins and Grids, then you can see if we change it, they'll both change, like there, there, inside, I might do 7.5, and outside, I might go to 1. OK. So the next thing I want to do now, these are opposite. Notice they're kind of they're um, symmetrical. Um, the next thing I want to do is draw my columns in. And so to do that, I'm going to make a black rectangle right here, and um, and it doesn't have to be the right size right now. I'm going to move that over. To about here. Now the way I did that is I'm using the selection tool and I'm dragging and as my mouse is down I'm holding down shift and option. See how my mouse gets a little double double cursor on it? That means it's going to make a copy of it if I release my mouse first and then the keys later. The shift is keeping it in a straight line. It's constraining it to a flat. To um, Okay so then I'm going to do duplicate duplicate and then duplicate so now I have five I'm going to select all of them and move them all at once to here so now we have the same spacing between 
all of those columns. And um, now I'm going to draw grid lines across each one. One, two, three. Okay, and um, yeah, this is this is good. It's helpful. Um, in the end, it's going to help you a lot. Um, so now we have these vertical. Now we need to do some horizontal lines. And I might, just to change things up, I might do something like this. And then move this down there. And then just duplicate that. And, you know, you can... And I might just take these guys and stretch them the rest of the way, maybe. Okay. Um, and then obviously I want to do um, my guides across, and I'm making a grid right now. Um, now there's lots and lots of ways to make a grid. Um, I've seen many, many, many ways of doing it. Um, if this doesn't, um, if you don't like the way this is done, you're welcome to do it another way. No problem. Oh, it's not going all the way across my, my um, spread. I think if I go off the page, it will. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. So if I keep it on the page, it's going to keep that guide restricted to the page but if I go off the page notice it goes beyond my page but it also goes to the other side which is nice then I won't have to do it twice a little off here And um, I'm doing this so um, we can actually create some thumbnails after this. Now you're going to do five of them. I'm doing one right now. Oh boy, I forgot to take this off the page. Just real quick. Okay, now I'm going to delete these the boxes. And then I'm going to duplicate these um, grid lines. So I've selected them with my selection tool. I'm going to grab one and hold down um, Option, Shift, and drag them to the other side. Um, and because my text boxes are the same, they, they, they came across. I'm going to see if I can do all these at once. I would feel a little silly if I could. Nope, I can't. I feel silly. Okay. All right. Great. So that is one um, grid design. And so I'm going to move that down here and here. And then you're going to do each one and you'll drag this B will go here and here. And C will go here and here. Okay, you get the idea. Okay, so you're going to submit these to me. And um, so the tricky part is um, uh, that that these, um, the as if you make a PDF, I'm not going to see these. So here's how I'd like you to submit these is to do a capture a screen capture of these. So on a Mac, I'm going to go Command Shift 5. 
and then um, and then I'll drag those some guides around here and then click capture the, there'll be an image in the bottom right corner and I'll right click it and choose save to clipboard and then I'm going to bring it into Photoshop and um, or if I do it to clipboard then I can just go into into this um, page perhaps and then paste it in so I turn in another page that shows all my um, all my grid designs so um, let's go back so that's our grid and then the next one is um, um, choose a grid from your um, from your different directions that'll serve you best and then create um, uh, some thumbnails, 10 thumbnails showing a variety of compositions while using your grid. Okay, so I know it's a long video, but this, I am going to do this. So I'm, so here's a spread right here. Um, let's say I've chosen A, and so I'm just going to do, I'll do three very quick layouts here. Um, let me see if I can get a decent percentage. Um, five. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's say one simple um, layout is going to be a big picture on the left, and um, a headline here. I think it's called African Ivories, perhaps. And then I might finish with text going down here. Now, this is too dark. So what you do is you um, change the opacity of this. So Because text doesn't look like a big black block, right? A picture might, but um, not for, for type. And this and a headline looks a little heavier. So that might be a good layout for my page one. My page two, I need to start getting into um, the actual, you know, some layout. So um, I'm going to grab that color. I'm going to paste that in here. And um, yeah, I might make it um, two columns here. And then I might do two more columns on this side, um, but let's say I'm make them shorter. And then maybe along the top, I'm going to put one of those panoramic in images. Okay, so I'll just put a big thing up here saying this is this is an image. Okay, um, I may. Copy paste. Oops. Copy paste. Um, I may have uh, another little image somewhere. Maybe I don't know. Um, or maybe I'll just have some text right here. Maybe that would be. You will have some text that just kind of is larger and talks about what's going on in here. Possibly. Possibly. Okay, I'm going to copy those and we'll move to the next page. Okay, so now I'm going to address how I'm going to do those little figures. Um, let's see, I have one, I can do one and I think um, I think that might be enough text to do one of our figures, but this might be better. So yeah, if I did that, and two, three, four, five, and then put the figures up here, they all seemed kind of vertical to me, just in my head. But um, what if It's just another option. Um, you know, they're about this big.
big here and oh maybe I have some type about each one like alternating sides right so maybe one's here and maybe one's here I have to really make sure that this block attaches to here so I'm not sure Oops. Hmm. I have five anyway so I'm gonna let you figure that out a little bit and it might be since they're narrow um, Maybe it is enough if they if we just do that. Um, possibly this text, maybe I divide that in half and then do like a two column thing here. I'm I'm not sure. I don't I don't know. I don't know. So this is the I this is the idea is that you are um, designing these pages. The blacks are images, the darks are headlines, the lights are text boxes. Okay, And then we also need to put in like little page numbers. So let's say um, I think a page number, my page numbers like here might be good. Um, and because it's t text I'm going to um, just use it as a gray and then I might also put like a caption underneath here to describe what's going on in this image and I don't want to run it to the gutter because you don't want type going through the gutter but if it's a big image like the ones that we had let me just refresh um, like either this big panorama or this water hole we can describe that um, I think just having a little bit, of, and you know, actually having the text or the caption over here might make a little more sense. Um, we would need another um, page number over here, and you know, we could we could also have a, a folio running at the bottom of our page, just saying what maybe what book this is or what chapter they're on or it, maybe it runs up here and it's um, reversed out so maybe we do it in white or gray up here maybe that's how we handle that and if I'm going to keep that portfolio then and these numbers then I should probably put this portfolio and numbers or folio and numbers on my um, on my master page Okay, so this is this is kind of how it rolls, and we do, you do ten thumbnails of this. Okay, um, then you save that and submit it into Canvas uh, by uh, March first, and then you start doing the design. So um, now a few things keep it interesting as people turn pages. You don't want to have the same design on each one. You want to mix it up and make it. Um, a pleasure for them to look at, right? So um, I'm trying to mix this up here. Big image, some type. I have an image at the top now. And, um, you know, to keep, this seems like a, an important line. So maybe, I'm um, just, just saying, um, maybe I'm going to put some type Across this top area like a big quote of some kind and maybe I would actually show that a little better by because these are headlines doing it more in lines let's do three and I don't think I would go to the total edge of the page but something kind of big and bold like this and this bottom one may not reach all the way over to the edge something like that and neither these won't either. They probably they might go. I don't know. We'll see. 
who knows but it does kind of keep a little more with what's going on up here right or just kind of reminds us a little bit um so let me just mention this is that if i wanted to do anything interesting with these i'm going to open this in photoshop okay and um i mean let's say uh well here here's something we could do with it um don't have to but just as an option um i i like this threshold thing i think it's kind of cool um but you could something like this so i'm going to choose file save as and I'm going to put it in, oops, yeah, in that supporting. And, um, oh, oh, yeah, I'm going to change this from image mode to grayscale and then to bitmap. And then I'm going to save this as a TIFF. Put it in there, save it. Okay. And then when I go into back into here, we'll do file place um, to go get our. Oops, let me see if I can use the word 21 publication assignments. Uh, okay, so here it is. And. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe we try this. This might be silly, but. And um, maybe instead of, uh, let's see, I think we can do this. So that fills with blue. I want it, I don't want it filled with anything. I'm going to try to get, and you'll want a color palette and things like that. So, so I drag that. yeah, so I dragged this on top of here um, to get a slightly different color. And, and then, I mean, I can move this opacity down a bit so it's kind of just quiet quiet this quiet thing going on in the background perhaps perhaps um so and then let's say okay so now that you've submitted now you're ready to put some type in here right so i'm going to open this up um african ivories copy that i'm going to go into indesign and we could just put it right over this. Paste that in. And, um, you know, let's say I go with a Garamond or something, but I could also find a font that complements um, complements the Garamond, um, which I'm going to try, like, this type of thing. And we'll increase the size. And I'm going to keep it, I mean, you don't have to all the time, but I'm going to keep this one going uh, to the edge. Let's see, can I go one more? Nope. Maybe if I open this up and this up and then center it. Um, and then I can try maybe 62.5. Okay, so 0.8. All right, yeah, so I've, I've pushed that, I think, as far as I can, as far as to my grid. I might move this up so it stays on the grid. And then, um, so here's how, here's how I'm going to work this. Um, I'm going to grab all of the type in here and I'm going to copy it. And 
And um, then I'm going to get my type tool and I'm going to place it here and paste it in. Okay, so, um, oops. Now I want to make sure this is the right size. I think I chose Garamond. It's, I know, mine's Adobe Garamond, but there it is. Oh, no, no, it's Garamond Premiere Pro. And I'm going to do 11 over 13. And um, let me turn these grids off by doing Command or Control semicolon. And then I'll turn off these um, things by going uh, Hide Frame Edges, which is um, a Control Command H, at least on a Mac. It might be different on PC. OK. So there's my African ivories. Eh, don't love that. I think it's a little too crowded. So I'm going to give that a little more room. And so what am I doing now? Hey, you're getting away from the grid. Well, what I'm doing is breaking the grid, and that's OK. But at least I had a lot of decisions made um, that helped me get to this point really quickly and really easily. And um, maybe. Maybe I'll um, actually like it somehow a little thinner. I think that would be kind of a little more interesting. And I might bring back my grid so I can see if I can um, hit that. Um, and then instead of this, I'm going to bring in, um, so edit place or control or, or sorry command d or control d on a pc and then i'll go get um, one of these masks which could look really fantastic try that one might be the wrong proportion i don't know yes it sure is um, So what, what I could do is um, go and add some black to each side of that. Um, so let me see. What I'll do is go back to my finder, and I'll open up this particular mask in Photoshop. And then I'm going to use my canvas size and expand this Okay, so this is a problem already. Let's see how big this thing is. It's 450 by 6 by 4, and the highest that we can go is um, 350 resolution. I'm sorry, 300 resolution, and it's only 6 by 4, so I cannot use that image large. So scrap that. Why? Because it's going to turn out grainy. It's not going to turn out correct at all. Um, so I'm going to go back to my designs and see if there is a larger one. 36. I feel like this is this is a very big one, if I remember right. 2,000 by 2,000, not that big. Ask two. 2000 by two. Oh, well, maybe those are okay, actually, now that I think about it, because it's just that just the mask is that big, but that doesn't mean that we can. Um, so I'm going to change this, first of all, into image size, and it's image image size to get to this. And I'm going to change this to 300. So it's like six and a half, six and a half ish. And then I'm going to use. Uh, image canvas size, and then I'm going to change the width to 10, oh no, to 8, and then the height to 10. And I'm going to keep it all centered. Okay, well that's not too bad. Um, it kind of goes with my column of type too. Um, and you know, I could put something behind it. Maybe I want to 
Um, I didn't say anything about patterns, so maybe I can find a, an African pattern to put in the background. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to save that. And this is mask two. I'm going to go in back into InDesign. Delete that. Command D. Um, mask two. Place. And uh, this should fit just right because I just sized it perfectly. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of interesting because they kind of go together in a way. I might make these align a little better with the uh, mask. And I think I'm going to end this about where the mask ends. So we get a similar um, feel. Now, one thing I neglected to do was to, to put in there who wrote this thing. <gasps> what? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Um, by Kate Ezra. her name in here. And I might center this um, and then and then use an italic, which is which is nice because it gives a different texture. So I'm at regular, I'm gonna go italic. And um, I think I'm gonna yeah, I'm I'm looking down here at the at the text, and I need to put my paragraphs in. They didn't really come over, so I got most African elephant ivories. So I'm just gonna put a return after those most. Okay, and I don't have the rest. Of it. It's on on the other pages. So this is what I'm looking at right now. I think it looks pretty nice. It looks kind of clean and kind of lovely. Um, I'm just gonna um, 45. Okay, yeah, that's. I mean, for me, I like it. So now, what do we do next? Okay, so um, this type we can connect. Right now, it's in a in a um, a type box. But see this little red with a plus? It means there's overflow. There's additional type in there. And yes, because I copied it out of the Word document. So I'm gonna click on that little red box until I get my cursor looking like this. It's loaded and it's wondering where do I link it to. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna put a text box there and then I'll do oops do the same here. And just looking at this, this is a lot to read. I'm concerned. Like, I, I think a good judge of reading is like, oh, do I feel like reading that? And boy, does that feel like a tech, really dense, dense text. So I may change this around a little bit. And I need to put my paragraphs in and things like that. Um, I can tell there's like, you know, like this type of thing when there's, um, short lines. I know that's where the paragraph ends. Okay. So is that any better? Mm, a little better. It's a little more broken up. It feels like a little more accessible to me. I'm going to go paste in that big image of, um, you know, this water hole. And we'll see what I can do to fit that in. Can I just do this? Maybe. That might be a little better. Um, but yeah, this is just a lot, a lot of text. So what I may do is, um, you know, shorten these, make them a little bit more 
a little more interesting to look at this type of thing. Um, noticed my return came over on this page, so I need to get rid of it so it still aligns. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of this is how this is what we're doing here. Um, I'm gonna go grab maybe. Um, I, I'm finding a nice quote that I like, and I'm gonna put that in here. Um, Okay, so, and I'm going to use that original um, um, type up here. Bam. So um, I just eyedroppered that, but I'm not going to keep it the same size. I'm going to move the size down a little bit. And I'm going to try to see if it reads good. Um, African elephant ivory naturally varies. Maybe we'll try this. From blonde to illustrious white. And I think I'm going to move this over flush right. Let's see how that looks. And we could change the color on this too, for that matter. So, and then this is another good thing. What colors are you going to be using in this document? And it's probably a good idea to build that um, up in your swatches. So as you pick some colors, you'll want to um, add them to swatches. Like I'm not definitely not doing this green, so I'm double clicked it and I'm going to edit it. So I feel like like a rich purple, a deep purple would look fantastic. Yeah, some kind of this lovely plum color. Um, and although I like it, it's the, the type is too thin right now. So I'm going to go for a, a little bit heavier. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is you don't want to put your um, type across the gutter. Um, trying to go page to page like that really doesn't, you know what, I like it up here a little bit better. I might do it like in this area and just increase it. Let's see how this looks. So you can see how the grid is really helping me a lot um, do this layout. I'm going to uh, and you know I, I honestly I don't love this being in full color so maybe I'll use something with this purple and a, and a yellow or something kind of feel like that might be um, let me. I know this is long, but I, I, there's so much to, to share with you. Um, I need to talk about page numbers, and I need to talk about. I'm going to do this as a duotone. So let me start with page numbers. Um, so I'm going to go up to my master page, turn on my guides, and then I'll go down to where my page number is going to be, right down here, and. Um, I'm going to make a little text box down here and put a page number. Now, 
this is my master page. So I don't want to change page numbers on every spread. I want to put in a special character that will change it for me. So I'm going to choose type, insert special character, markers, uh, current page number. And um, now I have to remember what, <laughs> what type I chose in here. This is, uh, let's see, Garamond Premier Pro Regular 11. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to this master page. And this is, I'm going to choose the Garamond. Premier Pro regular 11 and I can change things up a little bit with these page numbers that's totally fine to do um, yes, that is fine to do that like in other words um, we could do this um, I'm just gonna leave that I think that's fine um, one thing I am gonna do is center it and see how it's hitting this bar here now when i go to my opposite page and paste it in i know that it's going to hit that bar and rest on that and, and rest on this um, guide so now um, if i go back to my page two so it, it, it already knows, so it's this is page four. I think those numbers are too big. So I'm gonna go in and change those to a, um, um, let's see, maybe an, a nine, and instead of a regular, so I don't know, well, I'll just keep that there, but nine is what the change is going to. I'm going to go do that to the other side. Oh, you know what? I can just copy paste. Let me just do that. It'd be a lot easier. Copy. Paste. Okay, that's great. And then, um, yeah, and let's go take a look at our spread here okay so I did want to show that and then let me remove this little tab and then uh, let's see I, I really hate how this this is just much too bright as far as what I feel works here and maybe maybe I want to go like gold and brown and you know burn umber and Sienna or something like that. Um, but we can definitely try that with... Now, unfortunately, this is too thin to see color, and so I might just thicken this up a little bit from thin to light. And... I'm going to go grab that red and see how, oh, I kind of like that. And if I feel like it's just a touch thick right now, so I'm going to change it from light to extra light and see, oh yeah, perfect, really nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, and then, yes, so now I need to change this, and I'm going to use this, um, as a as a reference here so I'm going to increase the size so I can see that in Photoshop so here I am going back to the zebra water hole opening it in Photoshop and um, to make this a duotone first let me do a save as um, and we'll just call this water hole duotone now duotone is um, when you use two tones to make an image it used to be really popular when Four color printing was expensive, and so people, um, printers and designers, 
used other means of achieving. So what you'll have to do if a full color image you choose, you'll go to grayscale and then do a tone that becomes available. Okay, so here are the colors available to me. Move some of these out of the way. Okay, and so I don't want black. I actually want, um, I may just have to like pick something that that looks like it, like be a little more orange in there. Okay, and then we'll go get um, oh, not monotone. I'll do a tone. So now I'm gonna try this. This red here. Okay, so this is what the image is looking like right now with those two colors. I don't love it. Um, I'm going to try using our deep purple. Here's where we're at. And I don't love this either right now. Um, but I'm going to do something a little different. So I'm going to change this yellow um, duotone curve to flip that. And this will fit, and maybe that's just a little too strong, but it kind of fills in the background a little bit and makes it, I feel, a little more um, interesting. So, okay, so we're going to call this yellow, and we'll call this purple. And there's my duotone. That's fine. And then we'll go in and place this, um, this in place here. Control D. And then there's my duotone. So, Maybe this works a little better for me. Um, not totally set on it, but um, a few tools for you to work with. And then what you'll do is complete this entire layout until you've used all the text and included those five um, images in here, these little figures, but laid out just as nice as you can. I mean, this is going in the Met, right? So laid out, laid out nice as you can, and then submit it as a PDF. Um, and this is all due, this final is due March 8th. All right, thanks.